Okay, we've got our pot of washed choke cherries here. And now we're going to cook them nice and soft. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of water into this pot, just enough to get them to start cook without, uh, starting to cook juice out of the cherries, kind of like I did with tomatoes for sauce or canning spaghetti sauce, stuff like that, um, to get the cooking started without burning them onto the bottom. So since this is a pretty big pot, I'm gonna add about two cups of water. I think that's gonna be sufficient to get the juice cooking down there. Then I'm going to open my propane tank because I don't use this stove all the time, so I always leave that turned off right at the tank when it's not in use, just to be safe. And light up our, light up our burner. Turn it on as low as it can go, especially till this starts cooking, but as low as it can go is usually uh, plenty hot for this burner. And we're just gonna check on that and stir it and stuff until kind of all the um, cherry flesh cooks off the pits so we can strain the pits out. Uh, the only reason I don't just pour this, uh, pour the cherries straight into a hot water like I did with making surface berry juice is because of the, the cyanide-like compounds that are in the pits. I don't want them to spend months on the shelf leaching into the water. It's not a concern otherwise. There's, I think, the same compounds in Bing cherry pits there is in peach pits, there is in apple seeds, etc. If you're not consuming excessive amounts of just the pits, it's not an issue. But I don't want to just leach a ton of that into my juice. So that's why we're going through the process to, to cook the cherry flesh off of the pits for this. And the pits are too big. I can't run it through that hand crank strainer. So this is the best option of what I've got. So we're going to let that simmer for a while. So I stirred this once already. You can see a few of the cherries that I stirred up to the top have popped open and now there's getting to be a lot more. You can see as I stir it how many look kind of exploded and now I'm getting way more than the water I put in there. A lot of juice is starting to cook out in the bottom. So that's what they look like here after, I don't know what, it's been simmering five minutes or something. Not that the timing's important, but just to give you an idea. Um, and I'm gonna let it keep going a while longer because we want every little cherry berry to explode open like that. Now, you can even see through the steam how the berries are kind of turned a, uh, uh, more of like a fuchsia pink. They seem to do when you cook them and they are almost all getting mushy. I'm probably going to take a, my potato masher to this and see if there's any that don't mash the rest of the way but just let them simmer a teeny bit more. I don't know if the camera can even see all that hot pink juice through the steam. It's more steamy because the air is cool out here because it's been a damp, cool, rainy day. But anyway, this is just what we want. Okay. So we're calling our berries cooked and down enough. And now what we're going to do is strain all those cherry pits out. some water I got boiling to wash dishes up with later out here. So take a look at what I got going on. So there's probably lots of ways you could do this. What I've done in the past is use a little strainer, something like this. This one came from a thrift store. I've got a few of these and um, rinsed out my big bowl that I had the berries in earlier. Just need something your strainer will fit inside. And then I'm going to ladle our berries and their juice through here and of course all the part that's liquid runs right through the strainer and then I'm just using kind of a big spoon like this to mash up as much as I can of the um, cherry flesh off of their pits and then we're going to squeeze the remainder through a uh, 
a cloth to get the rest of it, but we're gonna get most of it out this way. So this is what I've done. It works pretty well. If you watched, I did videos on canning this a few years ago. Um, hasn't changed a whole lot at all. Um, it still looks pretty purple in there, but I can feel and see, if you can see up close, that a lot of what you're seeing now is the cherry pits and some skins, not a whole lot of anything else. And yeah, I saw in the comments from the video where Clay and I picked all these the other night, that it sounds like a lot of you guys have uh, enjoyed choke cherries before, whether it was somebody in your family that made choke cherry jam. I assume, I've never actually made this into jam. We don't eat a lot of jam but uh, I assume you would get the juice out in a very similar way and then make it into jam. Anyway, it sounded like a lot of people had a lot of good memories of that. And of course, like many other wild berries, they're, they're very, very nutritious. They're high in all kinds of vitamins. I think they got more vitamin C than oranges and lots of vitamin K, which is something that a lot of uh, modern American diets anyway tend to be pretty low in. And so on. So you probably don't want to watch me scrape all, you know, do this the whole way through. But let's see if I can show you here for a second. Show the camera if that doesn't fall the whole way down in my pot. Um, what pretty fuchsia colored juice I'm getting out of here. And it seems to be this way, no matter what color of choke cherries I've had, I, I'm not sure what all colors they come in. This year, as you probably noticed, we've had some that were more of a red and some that more of a like deep dark purple. Um, some years I've found some bushes that are more like Rainier cherry colored, kind of a light um, golden red orange color. Those are the only three, ooh, that's a lot of steam on the camera lens. Only three colors I've seen uh, around here, but maybe some areas have different colors. But no matter what color they are, what's interesting is they all cook into this pretty fuchsia pink juice when you heat them up. So now I've got the vast majority of the juice strained out and back in this pot and I've got my seed mush here and trying to keep the flies shoot away. We have had a lot of really cold weather. It's drizzly rain today. Maybe have snow by next week which is actually late in the year for here. Anyhow, um, but there's still some flies around. They hadn't been bad for most of the year, and I'd be happy for them to have the rest of them go away. So what I'm going to do, there was a little more juice that drained out of that strainer there, because I want to get a little bit more out of here. These are my great big um, flower sack towels that you've seen me use for a whole lot of things. This one's already stained. If you don't want it stained, don't use it for this. This will create some permanent staining for sure. Um, what I'm going to do is just put all of this pulp which is actually kind of heavy because the cherry pits are heavy. Into here. start squeezing. I don't know if you can see that running out. You can probably hear it if you can't see it. Every time I give it another twist, it's further compressing that pulp. Oh. Just like that. This is what happens when your claws are too old. Split that open. I haven't ever done that before. I guess that one was, I like to use an older stained one for this. I guess that one was too older and stained. But you get the idea of how it's supposed to work. 
and I got out, you know, just in that brief little bit, that much more juice. So I'm gonna go fetch myself another one of these and redo that with it not splitting. So that can happen, but you get the idea. That's what I'm gonna do, and then we're gonna go to heat this bag. It's still just a little warm, but heat it back up the whole way and can it just like we have canned everything else recently in the steam canner. So I brought the juice back up to a boil after it got all strained out of there. Put the pits in the compost. Since they've been boiled, they're obviously not going to sprout um, into plants at this point. Otherwise, it'd be worth throwing them around the rest of the property. And since I don't have as nearly as large a batch here, again, I'm opening that steam canner away from me. As a lot of things I'm doing, I'm not sure if I even have more than one full canner. We're going to see here. Um, this is another option for how to, if you want to heat your jars up, I simply put the batch right in that canner. Yeah, that lid's hot too, dummy. Um, <laughs> and brought it up to steaming. The reason I don't usually do this is because I usually have canners running one after another after another, and I need them for, you know, full jars. But this time I, I doubt I have more than one batch, or not much more, so... I heated my jars in there, which is another option you can do, especially if you're doing smaller batches. So they're pretty hot because that was just, you know, steaming. Of course, not with the lids on or anything. I'm just trying to get the jars heated up before I pour my hot juice into them. And then we are back to doing this, like I said, just like every other liquid thing I've steam bath canned. Look at that beautiful, beautiful fuchsia colored juice. You can see a little bit of pulp in there that is squeezed out of the cherries. This is going to be so delicious. I always just wish I had more of it. One of these years we'll have more time to spend on things like berry picking and we will. Anyway, um, if you've been following this last bunch of videos that have included a lot of canning, because this is the time of year when I do a lot of it, um, several people had other canning questions. I do have a video if you go to Odyssey or YouTube or wherever you're watching this uh, to the channel homepage and use a little search function and look up canning questions, just that phrase. I, or it's under the food preserving playlist, I believe, as well. Um, I did one just answering a whole ton of canning questions, so there's a good chance that I might have covered whatever you're wondering about in that video if you want to go look that up. And somebody, um, I saw commented that people shouldn't be using a steam bath canner like I do because they're not USDA approved. You, of course, are certainly welcome to decide for yourself whether that's something you care about or not. But that's also not true. That was true for quite a few years. I have been using this uh, since I was a young child. At that time, they were not USDA approved, not because of any issue, but just because they had never taken the time to test and study them. But sometime, last I checked, sometime a few years back, they actually had finally done that and said, oh yes, they are safe for canning. So if that um, comment worried you guys at all, um, you, you're welcome to look that up for yourself. But to the best of my understanding, they are actually now approved by the USDA as well, if that matters to you. And I just find them very handy for most things. Here in a little bit, you might get to see some pressure canning happen as well, which is something I... I do. I prefer steam bath canning. It's just a little easier, but there are some things pressure can, like when we get around to butchering all those meat boys out there that are running around crowing excessively, since we have about 50 roosters too many on the property at the moment. Um, I'm going to try to can up some chicken because that will save some space in the freezer, plus canned chicken. I haven't done this in years, but this was something else I did growing up. Um, is an awesome you know, meal to, or, you know, makes it easy to have a meal really quick. You can pull it out of a jar and it's ready to go, whether you want to put it in a, you know, pasta dish or make chicken salad or chicken tacos or anything like that. 
and for that I would be using a pressure canner. So you might get to see that after a little while here as well. I didn't think I was going to have more than one full canner. I'm not even sure if I think I'm going to be a jar short of having one full. I am. You know what I'm going to do since that jar isn't quite full? I don't know if the camera can see this. See how that one's not clear full? I don't want to put one that's not full into my canner at all. So, that's going back there for later. Nice job on being all prepared when you turned your camera on. Ariel. These don't need to can that long, so I'm not worried about running out of water in the canner. And since I already cleaned up my other hot water, I'm going to just use a little bit of that. Um, so I'm going to put five full jars in the canner. Uh, service or choke cherry juice, as you can probably see here, is more time consuming to do than uh, several other juices, but I still really enjoy it. See, now I get distracted and talking and I forget to check my rims here. That other jar that's not quite full, I'm just going to put in the fridge and we'll drink that up. I'd say over the next few days, but if I'm guessing, we'll drink it all tonight. <laughs> but anyway, um, this will give us just five more quarts of juice on the shelf. And there are way more berries out there. So if I have time, maybe I'll do a few more batches this year. I don't know. I also need to get the potatoes dug and carrots. Like I mentioned, there is snow in the forecast for next week. Uh, potentially and this is very late for it to not have snow on the ground here at this point so we'll see what all we get to before it's actually winter and so this is gonna be the first time you've seen me fill a canner only partially I believe I just try to make the, the jars kind of even since I don't have a full seven I just kind of evenly space out the five that I do have lid on bring this to boil again and we're going to do the same time as we did for canning service berries so I believe we're letting that go for I'm going to actually go look at my notes I think that's 15 minutes once it starts to steam again and then we're done with the project for the day which is always exciting to have one more batch of food going on the pantry shelf I was wrong. 10 minutes, not 15, is sufficient. Once again, opening hot steam. Things open away from you. One already sealed. I think I heard three of the five pop just there. This will get to sit till morning and cool. And it'll be going in the pantry as well. And several people have asked about where are you storing all this stuff. I also have a video called Where Do You Store Food in a Tiny House? I've been putting hundreds of jars of canned food in there every year that I've lived in there. You can go check that out. Plus this year we have also added an extra little shelf in the corner of the shop. So I have even a little more space to store things. But for many years I have stored hundreds of quarts that way. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.